So now what we have to do is we have to set up and bore this out here. Now this is an inch and a half round. We got to bore it out to uh, 59 64 and we're going to tap it for a 1 inch 12 uh, thread. I happen to have this lying around. So we're going to thread that and then we'll thread, we'll get our lengths all set up and then we'll thread the outside of that bar. So let's get this centered up in the forge row. Okay, so we got to get this out to 59 64 and we're gonna drill. We're gonna bore it because I don't have a drill bit that big. But we're gonna um, stop off with drill bits and work our way up. I believe this is cast iron. I'm not sure. We'll put something down to figure that out. But I have it centered. This um, I indicated this outside edge and also indicated this front face. So this is running out a little bit. So the drill's gonna catch it and probably try to follow that hole, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna end up doing a final bore to the correct size. So even if the drill kind of wanders a little bit, uh, I'm not worried. I just wanna plow out as much material as I can at the moment. So, I'll put something down here. Hopefully that doesn't blow out the camera too much. So now, we just need to bore that out to about 921, 921 thousandths or so. And we are at 922.5, so I'm calling that. So 
So what this is going to become is this piece of the drawbar right here. And this is the piece that basically what happens is, is this little taper will engage the end of the spindle. And this will allow you to spin the hand wheel and tighten everything down. So this one, I backed this hand wheel off a little bit so you can see, has a little edge to stop it. Now this actually isn't bearing any weight or any compression. All that's doing is holding this from sliding off the end. Now we don't need that and we're not going to be able to do that because we need to bore this for a nice sliding fit over our one inch tube. My plan was to have a one inch thread on the end because that's an easy thread to do. I had a tap for it. So we're not going to be able to have this ledge on the tube but we'll be able to make this with a set screw and I'll show you that after the fact. So right now basically what we have to do is open this up for a nice sliding fit over our one inch tube. Now if you have an oversized reamer that would be perfect. I don't have one and I don't plan on buying one. So what we're going to do, uh, a one inch drill might work but it might be a little bit too loose so we want to get as accurate as possible. So what I'm going to do is open this up to my next smallest size. I do have a one inch drill bit but my next smallest size is uh, 13 16 and we're going to open it up to that and then we'll just bore the rest out for a nice sliding fit. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so I got about a hundred and eighty thousandths to come out of this guy. Got a new uh, tip in my tool holder here, so I should be good to go. And set the lathe up for some feed. And we'll try that speed for now. Finish isn't going to be great because this is a leaded stock, it tends to be a little bit more tarry, especially if you're not using high speed steel. So I'm not really worried about finish, I'm more worried about fit anyway. Seventy thousands cut. Have some nice clearance in there. 
Let's see if we fit it on the back. I'm knocking everything in my shop over. There you go. There's our nice fit. You give it a little bit of clearance. And that sucker's good to go. Alright, so on the outboard of the spindle, which I'll show you, there's a 60 degree uh, shallow taper on that. So we're going to put that on this piece here. So we're set up to do that right now. So I'm going to slow this machine down. Uh, the cross side ends up being pretty close to the chuck, but I think we can get away with it. So. The compound on this machine is one of its weaknesses. I actually got to do a quick rebuild on it. I got a new nut for it and I have to make a spacer for it. So it's a little loose right now, but it's working fine for what we need to do. Okay, it may be hard to see, but on the outside of that spindle, right about there, you can see that it has a shallow taper right there. So that's where our taper is going to engage, and that's going to sit out here, like so. I know the lighting is kind of crap over this side, but you guys get the idea. Okay, so now comes the important part that we need to measure for length and cut this off to where we need it. So first things first, we put on our spindle protector. This does two things. This is a little, this one is actually a little bit too short. I gotta make another one, but this protects your threads so that you don't run a cutting tool into it when you use the collet. Also, it allows you to draw this nose adapter off. Now what this does is adapt the spindle taper which is a, a shortened Morse tape, Morse 4, I believe, and it converts it to the collet taper, which is right at the end here. And it has a, I don't know if you guys can see at the end, it has a little guide pin there too for the collets. That guide in that rear slot to keep them from spinning. So this sucker goes into there. Okay, and then we're gonna take our little piece that we put on, that we made, I'm gonna cross in front of you. I'm gonna put this in the spindle. All right, right now I'm touching the end of that taper, but what we wanna do is we wanna take the collet, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna slip it in, find that key, and we're gonna make sure that we have enough room to draw this together. So, basically we don't want this too long, we don't want this too short. So if I keep the, this bar flush to the back of this, we're going to see if we can draw that collet in all the way. If we can, then we know where to mark it. If we can't, then we can just move it. Not a big deal. Alright, that call is actually squished down, so I think we can just use that as our guide and mark where we need it to mark. So I'm going to push this all the way up as far as it can go. 
which is right here and this right there so that is where we want our threads to end and we need to add on a length for the boss of our hand wheel here so let me measure this and then I'll remark it and then I gotta saw cut it and then we can thread the end Okay, so I cut it off with my uh, horizontal bandsaw. Now, normally I would have just powdered, powdered it off right to the line, but of course I have a uh, potting tool holder, but I don't have a blade that'll fit it. So, guess what I'm ordering. So, I cut it off about, a, uh, about an eighth of an inch short just for any kind of saw irregularity. So, we're going to face up to this little scribe line that I have here. Okay, just going to make a little recess right where that blue line is. That's going to be the end of my threads. Normally I would do this with a potting blade, but again, don't have one. So this should work. I'm just going to get rid of that blue line. to do it there. I wasn't expecting it to move that fast at first, but that's what happens when you don't pay attention. Okay, and we are at 12. So now we can just continue that. a little bit better. Let's see. Let's see how she fits now. And she goes and she's right flush with the rear. All right. I'm going to call that good. So just going to do a little bit of quick testing. Uh, right now I have a 3 8 gauge pin in there. And we're running pretty much within one thou there. Now these are used collets obviously. And I haven't really cleaned them. So we just want to see if we're kind of in the range of where a collet should be between one and two thousand somewhere in that neighborhood this quarter inch one definitely looks like it has been used a decent amount so we'll check this guy out these could all use a good trip in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner to clean out some of the crud that's in the uh, little slots And we got about two on this one. So, uh, we're pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with that, considering I'm not making pots for rockets. So, now, what we need to do 
is I need to fix this to the rod so that it doesn't get lost. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay, so now we're set up in the mill, and what we're going to do is we're going to drill straight through, and we're going to tap those holes for a quarter 28 set screw, and I'll show you how that's going to hold everything on. So we're already on center, and as far as length from the edge, it's pretty much arbitrary, it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and drill this. There's one, we'll just tap the other side too. Okay, you can kind of see what we got going on here. The two set screws. Now we don't want this to be locked to that tube. We want it to free float. So what we want to do right now is I'm going to push this as far in. I'm actually going to put a collet in it to tighten this up. And then I'm going to tighten these set screws down. And they're going to make a dimple in the tube and then I'm gonna make a groove right where those dimples are a little bit bigger than the screw and that's gonna allow this to rotate but stay attached to that tube the draw tube so that we don't lose it okay so you can see my dimples there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a groove it doesn't really have to be that deep because it's not gonna be holding any thrust it just needs to be slightly wider then that set screw so that way there it can have a little bit of play in it because it's going to squish a little bit so all we're going to do is just go ahead and make a groove there so there's one mark there and the other one's right about there so we'll go a little bit beyond that There it is. Should be more than enough. So we can go ahead and test and grab the pod. And we'll just put it on this way for right now. But so basically. Alright, we're bottomed out. One turn out, bottomed out, one turn out. You can still spin, yet it's held in place. So now what I can do is just get some blue Loctite and Loctite these guys in, and then you're done. Okay, so here is the completed draw bar. Okay, so you can see. We're nice and flush with the end there. I put some red Loctite on this to Loctite this hand wheel to the bar. 
I don't foresee any issues with that. If I do have an issue, I can always add a set screw. I don't think I'll need to go that far. I think the red Loctite with the threads will be more than enough. And here's that little piece here. We put some blue Loctite on these guys just so that they don't back themselves out. And this is able to spin and I got a little bit of free play back and forth for it to move in if it needs to. And in the front, those are the threads. The threads go about down to the end of my pinky, so about an inch and a quarter down. So I got enough on the front. If these ever get banged up in the front, I can just face a little bit off and still have a perfectly fine collar closer. Um, you don't see a lot of these around, so if you do have a small spindle lathe, if you can actually get your hands on that spindle adapter, which is the most important piece, is, is, is that. <coughs> this here, just because it's hardened and ground, if you can find these online, <coughs> then you can very simply just make yourself a hand wheel collar closer. And same thing with uh, the 3C, something for the 9 inch. If you can find this spindle adapter, same idea, you can make your own collar closer for it. Relatively simple. So, now that I have the collar system for this, we'll get on to some other projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you on the next one.